All right, man, the rift between the MLB and the players has unfortunately continued this week. Last week, we talked the MLBPA was working on a counteroffer to the MLB owners for a season restart, which turned out to be a 114-game plan. It was soundly rejected, and the sides remained deadlocked. According to ESPN's Jeff Passan, the MLB is essentially arguing that they either need a 48-game schedule where players make full yet prorated pay, which is you only get paid for the games you play, but you get your full amount of money per game, or the players will need to take an additional pay cut percentage on top of the prorated losses. The players have countered with more games for more TV revenue and are refusing to accept anything less than their 100% prorated salary. There's a lot of math and uh, ill will in this one, it looks like, Jay. So uh, let's go ahead and talk through it. Is either side right? And how bad is this for baseball at Missy NBA return news? Yeah, uh, I'm going to leave all the numbers and money and all that stuff to you. Um, I'm going to just keep it big picture. And uh, my position is really unchanged uh, from last week. Um, this is, And it only makes it worse based off our lead story, which is the NBA having this act together. That that's that's a real problem because we talked about this. We talked about this many a time. This was an opportunity for baseball to take the lead. Remember, the NBA got shut down during this. Baseball had not even started yet. They were in spring training. So baseball's had time. They've had months now to get this together. And they're still not on the same page. And now, for according to something I read, according to a report I read earlier. The two sides are as far apart as they've been throughout the entire process, which is the worst point that you want to be in, considering if this was a regular June, we're, yeah, June 5th right now, the uh, baseball, if, if we're on a regular season, no pandemic, uh, baseball would be a third of the way done already. Uh, we'd be heading to the All-Star game in about a month, and we don't, even, we, we don't have any games played. Meanwhile, the NBA has their act together. And it all it, it, a big a big factor in this appears to be as it was last week, uh, the league's offer that they made had such a different feel to it than the the agreement they had in March based on prorated salaries, which was the agreement they had on about March 26. The league came back last week and said, "Now we want to do this sliding pay scale, which would hurt, which would." Uh, leave more of the economic brunt on the, the top earners in baseball, the Mike Trouts, your Garrett Coles, list goes on and on. And uh, the Players Association said, no, we're not doing that. And now, and they did say last week we had it, we said the Players Association was going to make a counteroffer. They made their counteroffer, and the league rejected it. And not only did the league reject it, they said, uh, we do not plan on making a, another offer. The count, I guess you maybe a, a counter counter offer maybe, hmm. but which so to me and I I I I have figured out fully on which side of this I'm on. I'm on the player side, and normally in a lot of situations I'm I'm critical of the players in the, in these regards. Um, but but base when you think about the league and the players saying that the league had their proposal in March that they had agreed to the, the whole money, the whole salaries was supposed to be set. And now they went back on it in last week's proposal. And now to, and now this week they're saying, okay, we heard your offer. We're not even going to bother. We're not even going to bother now. We're not even going to come up with anything. So now you got two offers that neither side agrees to, and the league is not even going to bother to try to make an attempt to negotiate further and get back into the middle ground so we can get this going. It's a terrible look. When you add in all the things that we've had going on in this in 2020 to include a pandemic and now the social unrest that we see happening before our very eyes, baseball continuing to not have its act together is horrible from an optics perspective. And now I was I, I've been saying this, it would it would behoove the MLB to get this thing rolling before the NBA gets back in action. And it appears they're not going to do it unless something changes in the very near future. Somebody has a change of heart. Somebody's got to step in that middle ground and bring some order to this situation or else baseball is just in a heap of trouble. Uh, they look horrible right now. Um, we, they need some on one side. There has to be 
a couple, a leader or two from both sides to find middle ground and come up with a compromise or else it's very possible at the right now, the way we're headed that we will not see baseball this season. And that's a shame. Yeah, it, uh, it does seem like a pretty bad situation that's not getting any better. Uh, the biggest issue, it seems like right now, is both parties, they feel unjustly hurt by a situation that's not in their control. You know, it doesn't seem like there's any unity regarding getting things going again. Like you said, it feels like there's two, the two sides are just in their own echo chamber right now. and They're not even opening the door to see who's on the other side. You know, the argument gets framed as the MLB versus the MLBPA but it should be the MLB versus the coronavirus, right? That, that's what we should be talking about. And, and we're not, we're talking about the two sides within the organization. You know, the NBA just set the example, right? They got together, they brainstormed with coaches, players, executives, blah, blah, blah. They came up with a pretty solid plan. It got voted 29 to one. The only team that the Senate was Portland. And they had some reason they did, but at the end of the day, it got unanimously passed. The NBA just trucked through this problem and they are rolling in, rolling on to into July. But Meanwhile, we have a $10.7 billion organization last year arguing, however, to split however many billions they still have up amongst a pandemic. Like you said, Jay, it's optics, and they look horrible right now. Um, the negotiations are, are they're kind of complicated, but like you said, what it kind of comes down to is a magic number of $326 million, which is really what we're hanging up on. There's a, there's a loss that's accepted right now. Like the, the league is going to lose X money per game because of the ticket sales, the revenue, the TV deals, et cetera, okay? And then the, the question now is, well, how many games of a season do we want to put on and accept that loss? The difference is the, the MLB wants to do a 48-game season. 48 games is what they've said, hey, that's all we can give you if you want your full salary. That, that's, you know, every per-game salary does not get cut at all. The players have said, no, 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 we want 82 games because we get more money in that case and more TV revenue. And, yep. Hey, I believe last week, if you recall, the league proposed the 82 games. The mm -hmm. players proposed 114 games. Now what is circulating is that the league wants 48 games. That hasn't even been proposed officially, but, but, you can, but you can see the problem here. Last week we were at 82 and 114, and now in, you would think in, a, in the interest of compromise, the league would say, okay, instead of 82, how about we go up to like 90? You know right. what I'm saying? Instead, now we're going the complete other direction at 48 it's that's the and that 48 just seems ridiculous to me but that that's like I guess that's where the league has wound up getting to and the players are saying hey we're not going to take anything less than that because we want they want one the players want more games and they also want it because it much more of a encompassing regular season I mean you would probably argue the 82 games right is enough to know where teams stand right like and, you can get a and, good idea yeah. of what a team is after 82 and, yeah and and more games for the players means more money Right, and the difference is if the league would put on 82 instead of 48, they stand to lose a total of about 326 million more dollars than they would in the 48 game. And, and, and both sides, you know, they have some blame here. The players could could exchange a little bit of extra cut off their salary to sort of bridge that that money gap between the two sides. And the owners could also come off a little bit more because there's something that happens a lot, especially in America. These billionaire owners – love to reap the profits and benefits when the times are good right and, and but then they they want to shove off the losses we see it like these these companies enjoy record profits and then when the economy crashes say with the covid thing or, or whatever else they immediately want to socialize the loss out to the government and the taxpayers and to other people and say well you know we're not going to accept the loss but then when the profits are good we want them to roll on in so it feels like to me if they tell the average person hey you know you need to save up in case there's an economic crash well these companies and owners should too every mlb owner is worth more than a billion dollars like we, 326 million dollars is, is not a rounding error but it's not astronomical either um as an outside observer i mean you can you, you're much more connected to this than i am but it feels like baseball has has had this problem for a while of you know between the, some teams strategically tanking i've heard there's always been this big stink about not paying some free agents it gives off like a vibe of like apathy in the sport and you know obviously correct me if i'm wrong but and it feels like uh, as a whole they are just not super interested in getting this underway like the sense of urgency the nba had just doesn't seem like it's there with mlb does it yeah and, and again it all comes back to optics and not only you talk about pandemic you talk about again social unrest that we're seeing based on uh the murder of george floyd but also um the the other consequences of the pandemic is the economic fallout 
when you know we did get a positive jobs report today but up until today um the situation looked bleak uh experts were expecting the uh it to get worse and baseball's just over here um on the on its pedestal quibbling over millions and and it's not it's not like th uh, this money i believe as jeff passan put it i mean these th these millions aren't a rounding error Mm -hmm. um, but it's still somewhat insignificant when you consider it's, this is a billion dollar industry and 10.7 um, from last year. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a lot of money, you know, and, and they're, they're losing and, money. No, no doubt. They're, the owners are saying, Hey, we've left billions on the table. Like the total loss is going to be like 3 billion, but we're talking like per game for these numbers. And there's, and there's plenty of working class um, men and women who aren't seeing a dime right now outside of their unemployment. Uh, that they're getting. So when you take all that into account, yeah, it, it just does. It looks like both sides. And again, that, that's where the comp, that's where a compromise has to take place. Somebody has to be aware on both sides saying, guys, like, look around, look at what's happening to our country right now. And we're over here. We, we are definitely in the in the privileged part of society right now. And we're having this type of disagreement. It, it's, it's terrible. Right. So, and again, you know, when you compare it to the optics of how fast the NBA got through this and made it work, Absolutely. it just looks, that, it looks and so the, and, bad. And the fact that the NBA has it together, it makes it worse. It makes them look worse. So, yeah. So I think the MLB in the end of the day, they're under now some extraordinary pressure to get this done and get, and get a thing. Someone's going to have to blink. It's not likely the owners. History tells us usually the players uh, are the ones that crack first. The owners are like, well, we can play whenever. I mean, we got money still. Who cares? But you know, the, the players do have some ammo in the form of the expanded playoff system coming. It's going to bring more money in. They can simply stop putting effort into the league. They can stop doing extra signings and extra sponsorships. And they can they can kind of be real passive aggressive about it. But at the end of the day, this is something that's got to get done because this has the, the chance, man, not to just bleed into this season. But, yeah, I think in 2021, a new labor agreement is coming up. And right. if, they, right. if they, this bad blood rolls into that, I mean, it could be a nasty – long period you can see lockouts like we've seen before that it might get real bad so they, they at least, at least we need to get it done fellas let's, let's play some ball